Hello everybody and welcome to another exciting fun-filled expeditionist episode of Radio Rama, where as the name implies, I show you how to work on, I don't know, radios, televisions, the occasional stereo system. And today, I should have plugged it in before I got started. Today we are working on this 1960s I'm guessing 60s era, early 60s era Admiral. It is a pretty late model tube set. I say late because this one says it's made in Japan. So I guess Admiral chose to um, divvy out the radio work to Japan because back then it was much cheaper to manufacture there. Now they kept on making stereos, televisions, and uh, appliances stateside. The, and the name is still around. You can still buy an Admiral refrigerator, a deep freezer. They were always known as kind of like the, the cheaper end of the electronics spectrum. They're probably right up there with Sylvania. It has a clock movement. It appears to be if it was a Telecron movement, it would say it was a Telecron movement. But it doesn't say anything, so it might not be. I'll know better when I get the back off. I did try it out already, and it kind of works, albeit not fantastically well. There we go. In every possession in football, what? It does have a phono connection, which is nice. I'm actually running out of micro switches, so this radio will get me by until I get more. I don't know what to do about the case. This is kind of a sickly, paisley blue color. It's not super attractive. I might just paint the back shell. Now, being it being Japanese, who knows who made it? If it's, if it's made by Panasonic, which I doubt, they used pretty good components, so no wonder it still works. But I've never worked on this model, and so it's a mystery to me what I'm going to find out when I open the back up. Let's take a look inside. Now, uh, what do you know? Dust bunnies galore. We appear to have how many tubes? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, I believe seven. Three, four, five, six, well, one, two, three, four, five, six. No, it's six. But, of course, the FM tube probably has multiple sections, so that's good for probably two if not three tubes. It looks like we have some damage to the case up here. You can see there's a kind of a crack. We can probably fix that no problem. Uh, that is that clock movement. That's definitely a Telecron movement or it's a spitting image of one. It looks like that the whole thing should slide out. I'm guessing that to remove the clock we have to remove the front plastic piece and then pull the hands and then pull this metal plate and then there should be screws underneath there to pull it out. God, I, I hate working on models like this where it just doesn't come out in one piece. And I'm curious if this thing is actually a hot chassis set which would kind of suck because then I would hope that the knobs and everything are physically isolated from the chassis otherwise this is not going to be that safe of a radio to deal with. The electrolytics probably fine. I find that a lot of the Japanese electrolytics from this time period they just really hold up. I may or may not replace it. I'll take a look at it. Maybe do a leakage test uh, looks like we are firing on the original tubes. They've all got the same reddish Admiral print on the sides. As far as getting this out of the case, 
well, it might be a hot chassis. There's no screws that I can see that are attaching it to through the bottom. That means it probably goes through all the way to the front. Let's see. Oh, this thing's going to be a bitch to work on. How totally unfun is this? It's like held in with little bolts. There's one there. There's one here. The question is, where's the others? Please don't tell me it's buried down in there somewhere. Or it could just be that's the only thing that holds it in. And they just assume that. Kind of a chintzy to design, really. All right, we'll see what we can do. All right, well, I've got it partially disassembled. It, was, it really wasn't that too bad. There's just two screws over here. Those little posts that stick up, there's not two screws, two nuts. And the knobs are pretty damn difficult to remove, so I guess that supports the other side, and it goes in these slots. And I pulled the clock face off. You just use a little, get my beer out of the way, and get some little, little screwdriver, and you press in on these tabs, and it just pops out. And you pull off the hands with your fingernails, just pinch them off. And then there's this metal plate here and then underneath we'll just remove these four screws and I'm hoping I can get it out of there without having to pull it through and disconnect all the wires but we'll see all right well here's all the innards luckily it all came out in uh well I didn't have to disconnect the clock wires this is indeed a telecron movement We've got telecron stamped and embossed on the rotor which is that drum there and then it says Telecron right there, United Laboratories, made in America. So it's not all Japanese. It's got an American clock on it. Anyway, let's take a look. This is a Mitsubishi electrolytic capacitor with three values inside, 80, 60, and 60 microfarads. The can is going to chassis ground, which makes me think... This is a hot chassis set. Now, on the other hand, we have these wafers that are physically separating the volume and tone controls from the chassis. That's another indicator it's probably a hot chassis, but I think they've done it right. You know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna insist on having a hot chassis design, you need to make sure that it's physically isolated from the user. Let's look underneath. Wow, there's like, Nothing to replace. This is all ceramic capacitors. And like I said, usually I find these electrolytics are okay. So, uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the pots and the controls, maybe the tube sockets, I'll fire it up and see all this going. I mean, there's not a single, there's not a single paper cap in this at all. Looks like we've got a solid state diode too, hence why I would have expected more quote unquote tubes for an AM FM set, but that counts as a you know that's the rectifier. So technically this is a you know a um seven tube equivalent set. We have this this is across the line. We're gonna put a a the proper capacitor across the line. It's gonna be a X2 Y2 rated across the line cap. So let's uh, do a little bit of cleaning up here and then we'll do a test, see what really works. All right, well, I want to repair this case before I do anything else. It's a pretty critical flaw here. And if we can't fix this right, the radio is not going to be that great. See, it looks like this is somehow cracked. And it's also jumped up over the top of this, this connection here. So it's warped a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a screwdriver and try to flex this back in place and put a little glue on it. Some uh, good old Gorilla Super Glue. So I want to make sure and cinch that up and firm it up before I get too carried away on this thing because that's a critical flaw. All right, well, I've prepared most of it. I got to say, this was a pretty bad fracture. I took the uh, front plate off and glued it from both sides and also put this metal tape over it. So I'm gonna let this just sit over here. I feel like an idiot because I didn't realize this, this plate came off. Whoop, that's the clock. 
this guy I accidentally put a little dent in it. It's not too noticeable. I might be able to ball paint it out on my, my little anvil over here. But in the meantime, that can sit over there. Let's get to the electronics. All right, well, this cleaned up pretty well, I must say. Now it's time to clean up the pots, which are these guys. One, two, three. And I'm going to use the right stuff this time. I actually bought a can of deoxit. So, here we go. Well, that one's not a pot. That's just a freaking tuning condenser. So, I need to worry about that. Let's work that back and forth. This guy's coming loose a little bit. I think I'll tighten that up a little bit. But tighten that up, this nut here, and then we'll give it a test fire. I'm sure it'll... Well, I thought I was going to be able to be lazy on this one and get off scot-free without having to replace capacitors, but the um, electrolytics on this guy are on their way out. That's AC pollution. I granted, I'm still getting radio. But it's across the board. It's complete AC pollution. The good news is I'm looking at this and we got three values and they're on these pretty generously, I'd say, long wires. And the thing is, this is a chassis ground, so we can stick our grounds anywhere. I mean, this metal. So screw it. I'll bite the bullet and replace these electrolytic capacitors because otherwise it ain't going to work right all right so we're going to replace these three and hopefully i will do a decent job of making myself not look like an idiot I said there's 360 electrolytic capacitors in there so this is close enough 347 microfarad caps pretty loosey-goosey these things are not super sensitive so let's take a look here we got this lead which goes there and we know that this lead goes to chassis ground so we can just snip some leads here and put that first cap right over there if I can just oh here's my pliers so one again goes here there goes the chassis ground we'll just hang it there and get my soldering iron out and solder this lead in here that's a negative. And then we'll solder a positive. Sometimes you have to be creative with these things. Let's get that resistor pushed down a little bit. We'll put the positive right there. And we'll solder that in. I'm doing this pretty loosey goosey quick for you guys, so it's not so boring. A little bit more on there. I like to solder the crap out of everything. All right, so that's one lead, so we can remove lead number one of the electrolytic here and get that out of there so we don't get that confused with any of the others. That's one. Two goes to this output tube, and it looks like we have a ground here to chassis. So, there is that. Likewise, we're going to do a little bit of a a cheating job here. Sometimes you have to kind of be creative. Let's see, this is positive, negative. I can definitely go over there. So we'll trim our leads a little bit here. Because this guy goes to chassis ground. Oh, come on. Behave. Behave for the audience. Now we'll put that in there and solder the negative to this negative terminal strip here. There's a lot of terminal strips in this guy, so it's easier to do. And then that comes over. We'll go around. Oops, oops. That just came out of there. How embarrassing. All right, get back in there. All right. Yeah, it's a good thing that YouTube can have people like me who do not know how to act 
and sure as hell do not know how to make videos. And somehow there's people that actually watch it. What did I just cut? I cut the wrong thing. Well, that's aggravating. All right, stop the cameras. All right, see what I did there? I wasn't paying attention. This doesn't actually come from the electrolytic, it comes from over here. So, silly me. So we're going to do the next lead. And before I, I think what I'm going to have to do on this one is just cut this one out so I can fit the capacitor in its place. So I just left a little nib of the old one so I know where it references to. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of share the space with this other electrolytic. I'm just going to kind of cut it to size. There we go. And we'll solder this guy in. I'm not afraid to use lots of solder. I want everything to be nice and secure. And then we'll cinch that up a little bit. Just kind of lay it there. Come on, I'll stick. Do, 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 just touch up a few of these a little bit more. There we go. Now we'll trim off the excess here. Like this. And now we only have one. And that one, where does that go? That goes to the other end of the diode. And there's a ground right here. So perfect. Let's get our last one here. And before I continue, I'll snip off this guy and pull it out. And we have our pet positive and our negative. And we'll just, again, we want to get things kind of close. Maybe I'll lift that up a little bit, give it a little more room. That clearly does not need to be that long. So we'll trim the leads. And our positive goes here. It's still a lot of lead, but I can just wrap it around a bunch. So we got a positive there. And now we just need to attach our negative. Taking great care to make sure that's not going to touch anything. I'm going to cinch it in as much as I can because I get a feeling that this, you know, more than I think about it, let me look at the case for a second. Oh, that's not much. It should be just fine. All right. Never mind. All right. So we'll cinch this guy over here like this. And then we'll solder this guy into place. It's like watching paint dry almost, except worse. All right, that's all secure. So now it is the truth time, truth telling time. Will it work? Let's plug it in and see. Or will there be fireworks? Because Lord knows I've soldered shit in backwards. In fact, I'm going to put my glasses on in case any electrolytics blow up. That's me touching the knob, I guess. 25% off travel products when you purchase a passport photo. Get travel ready at Staples, your one stop travel prep destination. <laughs> That noise in me touching that knob makes me wonder something. Is there actual voltage on it? Do a little test here. Oops, AC volts. I touched that volume knob and ground at the same time. Ground meaning my ground over here for my power. So I want to make sure there's nothing on that, that puppy. That would be uh, bad news. Right. 
Is that in the shot? Yes, it's in the shot. Okay. No, there's nothing on it. Let me turn the plug around just to make sure it's a polarity issue. Or it's not a polarity issue. 30 volts. It's 30 volts, but probably like barely any current. I was hoping that wasn't going to read 120 volts. So that means, yes, that pot is indeed isolated from ground. on today's edition of Core Christianity. Ugh. Anyway, seems like it works pretty well. It's actually a kind of a sensitive little radio. And that really wasn't too bad. That just took maybe about 10 minutes. And hopefully you got some mild, possibly mildly boring entertainment out of that. All right, welcome to day two, working on the Admiral radio. And I gave it some thought. And I feel like this, this color is just so drab. It's just kind of like this poor grayish blue color that I am going to give it a custom job. I'm going to keep this front white. And I'm going to give the body this blue color. Since we're already kind of blue, that means it should get good coverage. I've had really bad luck with this brand of spray paint for some reason. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to use some warm water found that putting stuff in cans in warm water helps a little bit. This this case needs to be super cleaned up before you do anything though, inside and out. So I'll take it over to the sink and use some cleaners to really degunk it, degrease it, de-dust it, whatever. And then we'll let it set out in the sun and dry. Then we'll need to mask this front off. Shouldn't be that difficult. And uh, then we will proceed with painting. Okay, so I cleaned up the cabinet looking pretty good. I need to let it dry here for a while. But as I'm waiting for it to dry, I'm going to go ahead and do the last part of this electrical restoration process, which is to add the audio input feature. This is going to be a lot easier on this one because it already has a phono jack, so I'm just going to run in through the audio. Uh, but as this is a hot chassis set, I'll need to add a uh, isolation transformer between the audio input and the um, funnel input and what I mean by that is that blue and black lead that's the uh, original phono input connection so I'm just going to run it directly through those leads I'll show you what I mean when I get the isolation transformer out I just dropped it anyway here's the isolation transformer and as I've explained repeatedly on this channel it's nothing special it's the equivalent of a wall wart we have 120 volts in primary Secondary output is 12 volts, and what we're going to do is run the primary to the audio connection. So we see we have this blue wire, and that works its way all the way up to here. And then the negative goes to the other end of the across-the-line cap. And you want to place these as close as you possibly can to the, uh, the source, and so I moved some stuff out of the way. We're going to put it right in there. That'll be pushed down in there snugly. Well, it's not quite touching. But like that, we'll put some glue on there to make sure it's going to stick. And then we're going to run uh, wires both over here to the other side of the isolation trans... I mean, the, the cross the line cap, which still needs to be replaced with the true cross the line cap. The other will go to this connection right there. And we'll need to make sure split right and left channels together to make true mono. I will do that with a series of little resistors and uh, then it should work. We'll need to run an audio cable to the other side here. I'm thinking what I might do is I might run it through the back here, tie a knot so that you can't yank it out of place. Okay, so we've successfully installed the audio input system. We have our right and left channels going through those little resistors tied together to make true mono. The other side is the ground. We have our two leads going to the, well, the one lead going to the positive side of the input and the other one going to the negative that goes to the other end of the cap, of which I still need to replace. 
I've got it on the phono selection and it seems to work okay. It's not the best sounding speaker. It's like they coated it in some sort of plastic film. It does have flexibility, but you know, it is what it is. It'll sound a little bit better when it's put back in the cabinet. So that's it as far as the electronics, except for replacing that guy. And uh, then we will move on to the cabinet. All right, so now that I have masked off the radio and also cleaned it with rubbing alcohol, it's time to get spraying. First, I'm gonna do a test spray because I don't trust how this comes out of the can anymore. That looks good. You wanna shake the snot out of your spray paint. And what I've done is I set it in some warm water for about 10 minutes, so the paint's gonna be a little more viscous. Well, maybe the opposite of that, but whatever, you get the point. You just wanna make broad strokes. And don't ever stop in one particular place. Just keep it flowing. And it's starting to actually look pretty good. I don't think it'll take much because this, this case is already kind of blue to begin with. Just go around and get the whole case. And you see, I'm just going around and around and around the case. I'm not stopping anywhere. It's going to kind of generally, and you also want to get the back because someone will see those back edges. And what we're going for here is illusion illusion that this is the original factory paint job even though it never came in this color and I tend to lay it on pretty thick I just go all in I go go all in with one series of heavy coats it takes a little bit of practice of doing that because it's very easy to make it run when you put it on heavy anyway this seems to be doing Pretty reasonable. I'm gonna put the camera down and continue spraying. I'll probably use up half the can on this. And now we're gonna wait. For some reason I find that that brand of spray paint for some reason does not settle flat. So we're gonna give it just a few minutes to make sure it's good and then we'll be good on the paint job. All right, so paint job turned out okay. Took all the mask and tape off. And now that we've got the audio installed and the, the radio, it's time to do reassembly. And what I did is I got this uh, t-shirt so if I lay it on its face or something I don't scratch up the new paint first thing I need to do is glue in the uh, station indicator marquee because it was originally held in with adhesive that has come off it doesn't matter it's partially held in by the uh, the friction of the plastic glass or the plastic thing that goes over the front and then we'll install the innards and uh, then we will proceed to uh, test it make sure we're still firing on all cylinders all right, well, this set is now done, and something I didn't show that I've been doing lately on these painted sets is I will actually buff the paint out with some uh, Novus plastic polish and car wax to um, get rid of any of the imperfections so you get more of a glossy mirror-like finish. Um, it's working quite well. we got FM and AM. And then I've got my Bluetooth running through on, on this one. It sounds better once that speaker's back in the cabinet. That's usually the case with these guys. Um, I'll let it run here for a little while, make sure nothing's going to blow up or burn out, and then we'll call this guy done. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, as usual, you can ask them down below in the comments section, and I'll try to get to them, even though I've been doing a piss poor job of it lately. And until the next time a radio or some electronic device comes across the workbench, see you guys next time. Adios.